All right, my friends, I'm going to need some help. This is the hand of Hercules, and I believe this is a real hand. You see the skin is eroded from here, broken off. That, that is exactly what would happen with skin. This is exactly what would happen with the blood. Red blood runs right out of the fingertips. And I'm absolutely certain of that, that because I have a ton of them like that. Now, you see these two little holes here? Let me show you something. I have a giant fingertips, 36 inches long, here, this long. And it has a fingernail, it has fingerprints, and it has these two little spots. It's exactly what this is. You see those little two spots? Same exact same thing. This is the fingertip. That's the fingernail. The fingerprints are still in here. I, I broke this off and had, took, went inside and took the blood out of it, the, the our artery, sent that off and had it tested in its human DNA. It's almost three feet long. That's what the bones do. They bump into the next bone. Someone could go out to that hand of Hercules, and I, I'm, I'm almost 100% certain that is a real hand. All right, I think I showed you this fingertip. It's approximately 36 inches long. That is the bone. Those are the two little spots, is it? like I believe was in Hercules' fingertip. Now, I broke this off of here. This was right here. The fingernail went right there, and it just it separates just like it would from your finger if your flesh came away from your fingernail. Now, wrapped around, immediately your fingerprints start, and it's exactly what we have here. These are the fingerprints. All right, those are the fingerprints. It's called grip skin. Now, hold on one second. All right, I, I like getting deep into the anatomy, and this is deep. And this is the fingerprints. These are him right there. They're right there. Now, this is the grip skin came right off. As You see this? This is the bottom of the grip. It's just like this. Lifted drip right off of that fingerprint now. Now, then I went inside the flesh underneath here. Well, obviously it's stone now, but you can find the blood vessels very easily. And I found the artery, and I went inside and took the arterial stuff, sent it off to have it tested. PCR tested five years ago, and here's what happened. All right, I've been asked not to use the name of the people that did the test, but trust me, they were a very good lab. Now, and they did this special testing, PCR DNA testing, long ago, five, six years ago we did this. And it was the first time ever done in the world, and uh, it ended up being a nightmare for them because it showed that these things were human, and they were giants. And, and now they're being assaulted for the last five years for doing the test. And nobody can get these tests done anymore that I know. Uh, anyway, look at this. The DNA sequence, excellent quality DNA sequence was obtained for the 36 inch tip sample and for the lung. Now, look, I'm going to, hold on. All right, now, excellent quality, excellent quality for that 36 inch giant tip. I mean, I take it right out of the artery, so it's just, and the lung is like, here, hold on. This is the lung. I took it like out of the, right up out of a pin drill in here somewhere, right up in there. That's where the leaking blood is out of the lung. That's a lung. Anybody knows that's a lung. And this is the fascia, the, uh, well, they call it pleura on a lung. It's a very, very rubbery, and that's where the heart would sit. This is a left human lung, and it's a DNA certified CAT scan. All of this stuff is every bit I can do, I did to it. Everything. There's nothing that's not here. How can anybody deny this for five years? Following the processing of the 40 minute formatting of the DNA, approximately 80 to 100 base pairs of DNA sequence generated for the 36 inch tip sample using these primers and for the lung were submitted individually into a nucleotide blast search using the National Center for Biotechnology Information database, whereby each DNA sequence was matched to all DNA sequences in history contained in their and in this database and here's what it came back with hundred percent 100 percent match for homo sapien mitochondrial cytochrome b and d loop region there's that's for that gigantic tip and for the lung same thing because they're both human human stuff and if you go further it shows how you know all these chromatograms and where all of the CTAGs and all this business was. I mean, this is pretty serious stuff. 
Well, okay, my friends, that is what you're going to find in grip skin if it's a real creature. Now, I don't think medicine even realizes that the grip skin has these fibers in it. And, I, and I, you're going to find them. I'll show you. That came from a giant toe. I'll show you that in a second. This is from a giant hand that is also on my property. And this is the palm of the hand. This is the grip skin. See the silver stuff? That's the real tough, tough. And it just peels right off, just like the th picture I showed you. And this is the palm of the hand, just like your hand. If you hold your hand out like that, that's the palm right there. There's the little thing that runs down there. There's where your thumb goes. And I have parts from this. I have knuckles and I have all kinds of parts from this. I have even parts from the other end, the toe. Now, and that, that also has been DNA certified as human. That was the third thing I had on that test that I didn't show you, because the other two uh, were easier to show. Now, uh, anyway, it's time to look at this stuff. It's it's everywhere. I, I have nothing special. It's not not like I have anything special here. But anyway, I'm going to show you that toe that this grip skin came from. This toe is unbelievable. What you see is just kind of funny, actually. All right, this is where the grip skin came that I showed you came off from this toe. That's the toenail right there. And you say, oh, Roger, how could you tell that's a toe? Well, here's how I can tell. First of all. That is where the toenail was. This black is vein blood. Almost never, ever, ever, ever will you see vein blood blow out. It is almost exclusively the arterial side that will blow out. And you say, well, Roger, why did this blow out from the vein side instead of the arterial side. And the reason it blows out from the arterial side, there's no restrictions to them. The vein side has valves that you can't blow backwards, and they never do, except this one blew them backwards because it had to. And you say, well, Roger, why would it have to? And they say, give me a second, and I'll tell you. Take it easy. Slow down. Now, what is this? Well, that right there is the vein. Hold on, I gotta make sure you can see that all right. Yes, you can. Let me put a little more light on the subject. Now, that is the vein that led into there. This side was where the artery was. You see this wrap? They all have a wrap like that. It's a fabric. They call it the tunica. Because this thing is really very pristine. But what do you see on this side? You know what that is? That's the guy's callus. <laughs> I am not kidding you. That's the guy's callus. It's loaded with metals and gold and all kinds of stuff. That is the callus. You see that? That's what they call cornified skin. <laughs> and this is his grip skin on the bottom. And he's got this... Oh, man, this sucker is heavy. He's got the same pads that you have on your feet, on your toe. Your toe there. This is that grip skin, see Now, you should be able to find that on anything that is like a finger or a toe. I have a little tiny toe around here, or a finger somewhere. Hold on, let me find it. Oh, I, got it I got them everywhere. Here's another one. Uh, hold on. Give me one second. All right, that's from a giant. I have every single size that you can imagine. I have creatures, I have fingers, I have toes, I have every single organ. All right, that's a fingertip. Now, I told you, they all have that little fabric-y looking stuff I just showed you. Well, this has done the same, same too. I don't know if you can see it here. I, I believe it, it's visible here. As a matter of fact, I can see it in the camera. So I don't have to show this in the microscope. Well, maybe I will anyway. You see that? That's where the blood comes out. Hold on. See it right the tip right there? That's where the blood shoots out from the artery. That's why it's on this side. There's another tip on that side, which is the vein side. So anyway, that's the fabric. And you should be able to find this somewhere on that hand. Because it'll be uh, anywhere on the fingertips and on the palm and all that stuff. And the bigger it is, the more easy it's going to be to see this. What it is. I, and again, I don't think they understand this is even here in uh, in the medical industry. They didn't know they didn't know about interstitial until I discovered it.
<laughs> because I'm looking at the whole creature just like it was alive. They get slides. Every, all the moisture is gone, and they, they thought these interstitium was just a flat mat. And they, they admit it. They say we never found it because we, by the time we get the, the dead guy, he's, he's gone. Everything's flattened out. You look it up, interstitium. They call it a new organ now since like 2016, 2018, somewhere around there. I discovered it in 2012, and I worked with Gil Headley. I've told this story a thousand times. I don't care. Gil Headley deserves credit for speaking to me. Not another one would. And I kept asking, what is this, what is this? And after my specimens even were cat scanned, the DNA tested, and everything, nobody would talk to me. It's a, it's a strange world that we live in when nobody wants the truth. And this was all written about. They said there's going to come a time when you come up with truth, they will just spit on you. And I'm telling you, I had a lot of cleaning up to do after I showed the truth. All right, what I would need from someone is extreme close-up of this and the fabric of the tissue. You may even find fingerprints up in here. This I would need. I would need to see these holes and there may be even blood inside of them. They maybe coated these with a little something. They maybe did a little makeup to them, but not much. Now, something up in that bone should be understood, visible. Now, this one appears to be broken, or that just could be the end of the bone. I'm not sure, but um, usually the, they just separate right along their, their um, fascia planes. They break open. Uh, although this is not the same case here. When they make them into statues, I think they do something else to them. But still inside of the coating is the original creature. And I'm almost sure this is, you could see, um, you know, you got to be right up on top of this and get the texture of the fabric and underneath the skin because this could be a tiny coating over the top, just a slick to keep it from you know, falling apart, like, you know, we understand. Because it does look like it's been worked. But this is what you would see. The, this little modelly effect comes through the, the textured surfaces. And it, it's everywhere. And I see them in all of this, the, the statues that had creatures inside. And I've seen a lot of them with creatures inside. No question whatsoever. I believe that is a real hand. You see that? That's a mummy. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, that was a statue. And there's a mummy inside. That's the ribs. You know, that's his lungs and his kidney and all that stuff. This is from a Brian Forrester um, video, and he calls it very strange weathering. <laughs> it's a body inside, and there's a lot of them like this, a ton of them. And the Buddhas, a lot of the Buddhas, hold on. All right, you can go up and look at this. The mummified remains of a monk have been revealed inside a nearly thousand-year-old Chinese statue of a Buddha. Here he is inside of the, the uh, that's the body inside of, of this statue right here. They did this, <laughs> all kinds of stuff like this. It's just an amazing world that we lived in, or we live in, that we don't know we lived in.